So when I look at tempo, I look at the momentum going towards the desired target. Now, a lot of younger kids want to defy that momentum. They want to defy that forward gravity, right? Because it's, it's, it's a threat to the brain to produce greater rate of acceleration down the slope because if there's instabilities within the athlete, they're not going to be able to handle the energy production that they're, they're getting. All right. I know that's nerdy and I apologize, but essentially if we drew a line from the front shoulder, like he doesn't move that, you know, he doesn't move past that line until his descending move. So what we have now is we have a limited amount of acceleration, right? So we're trying to produce energy into the ground. We're trying to be on time. But if we limit the amount of forward momentum, right, in this initial move, now we have all of this time, right? Like time is so sensitive when it comes to the pitching delivery and we go back to this, this notion of throwing fast to move fast. So now with all of this time that we have, right, in order or from the point of peak leg lift to all the way time to anchor into the ground with our front foot, it's gonna wanna go early, all right? Without that forward momentum in the initial move, right? We are, we have more time for that front foot to anchor down, which is more time for the trunk to go early. When the trunk goes early, we don't create that rotational energy. We don't create, create the stretch that we need to produce arm speed, right? Arm speed is not generated from the arm alone. Arm speed is generated from the sequencing of the hips rotating, the trunk staying neutral, anchoring down with the front foot, and then having this stretch, right? Like that, um, separation we talk about and then releasing that stretch and the pulling of the trunk pulls the arm through that's how we get arm speed so with all this time and the trunk going early right and you can see an anchor point like boom that's anchor point that's full anchor point that's full point in which you can see the front leg is taking on full force like it's early right in reality, we would want like at touchdown of the front foot, like the trunk to remain somewhat neutral. Now I say all this full well knowing at 14, like 99.9% .9 of kids are going to have sequencing issues. The, 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 the goal is how do we clean it up? And to me, it starts and stems from the initial move, right? So if we, if we increase the tempo and increase the speed uh, and the momentum of the initial move, we kill some of this time. And maybe now the hand will raise a little bit later in the drive phase. He'll probably get a better stride. The hips maybe will rotate a little bit more on time. So we're not, we're not late to rotate those hips. So we create this stretch. And that's my fear with, you know, guys at a young age trying so hard to locate pitches because the body will put, or the brain will put brake pedals on the body and limit the, the acceleration, limit the tempo to control, right? These movements through time and space. So as soon as he lifts, right, rhythmic movements of the hands and the feet, both ascend, right? Watch his, his center of mass, watch his being, right? So before he reaches the peak of that high leg kick, he's getting going down the slope. He's going to be accepting what the slope has to offer, which is acceleration, right? It's like if you're running on a trail and you're, you're in the mountains and you're going downhill, right? You have the ability to go a lot faster than if you were flat, but without the stability and the coordination and the athleticism, you're going to try to fall backwards, right? You're going to try to limit that amount of acceleration you have with the stability. And again, stability is a, is a piece that is going to clean up over time if you're a younger guy. Um, but without stability, you don't have ownership of the energies and forces that are being uh, applied and transferred and absorbed within you know the delivery so again forward momentum in the initial move it it, it kills time for all these movements that we have just talked about to happen so now as he separates his hands you can see that timing and then as the point in which he anchors down right like this is we're cooking here right so you have the hips into rotation you can see the back foot you have the lead leg in full anchored. You have the trunk, the torso in that neutral position, as you can see with the, the line on his pants, like that's pulling, right? It's rotating, extending, right? So full hip extension. And then now as he anchors down, the hips are going to pull the trunk into rotation. The trunk is going to then pull the arm. And now you have all of this arm speed available and you have the trunk reaching out 
and getting extension and flexion over the lead leg, right? So grasp that picture there, right? Because we get pushy with our arm. We get pushy with our arm if we're limited to the amount of rotational energy to be captured, right? So if we get pushy, we're, we're limiting the arm speed or we're, we're putting strain on our elbow, right? Like he's got a whole lot of layback and, and external rotation, but it might be generated by the arm and you can see the lead leg not fully blocking, right? It's continuing to move forward and we want that block. But again, all these byproducts, right? Like all these things at the end of the delivery to me are byproducts of things that we could do better in the beginning.